Hello again. First, I want to thank you for all the likes and really nice comments you all gave my last video about the exotic pentatonic skills. It boosted the channel for a while and that motivated me to make the next video, and that is this one. Now, choosing a certain scale, key or mode can only be done when you know how it sounds, right? Of some scales and modes, you know exactly how they sound because you have heard them and used them many, many times. Think of the major and minor scale, for instance. Now, other skills and modes are not yet stored in your musical memory. You have to play a few licks and chords within that scale to refresh your memory and get a feel for the sound. Now, in this tutorial, I'll show you a way to study scales and modes in a particular manner that is very efficient to get the sound of that skill and at the same time practice your dexterity and technique to outline the scale or mode in a compact sequence of chords, inversions, a scale run and triad arpeggios. Playing such a dance sequence will improve not only your hearing, but it will enhance your technique too, killing two birds with one stone. Now, all scales, keys and modes have one thing in common and makes them unique at the same time. And that is that all scales are configurations of whole and half steps, and in rare cases, a one and a half step too. Now, the placement of the half steps in a scale or mode renders them unique. It causes a scale to sound major or minor and determines the brightness, darkness and overall sound of the scale. For instance, the classical E harmonic minor scale will sound completely different than the dreamy E Lydian scale, for instance. Now you can see that the structure of the scale is completely different and so is the sound. Now for the modes of the major scale, the same thing is going on. Each mode is a plain diatonic scale, but it has a different configuration of two half steps and five whole steps. And we will see that later on in depth. Now playing the mode as a scale will reveal the sound and playing chords and arpeggios derived from the scale will outline the mode even more. So to grasp the sound of a scale, we should play the chords, scale, and arpeggios. Now picking the right chords and thus the right arpeggios, we most likely get the sound in our ear, in and our fingers in the most efficient way possible. Having done this, it will be easier to choose a mode or, uh, or skill for the sound you are looking for and turn all this into a working musical expression. Now, if you're not familiar with the modes of the major skill or with modes in general, you could watch my videos uh, Modes Explained Crystal Clear and Write Modal Chord Progressions before watching this video and return Enlightened later on. If you do know a thing or two or three about modes, then proceed to the next level in good conscience. Every mode of the major skill has its own characteristics, as you can see in this recap. Now, the Aeonian mode is the major scale itself and is characterized by the combination of the perfect fourth and major seventh degree. Use this mode over major seven chords. It's also used a lot in mainstream popular music. Now the second mode is the Dorian mode. It's a minor skill with a major sixth degree. It's a hopeful sounding minor skill. But you could, uh, you'll find this in jazz and, uh, and blues and old school rock, for instance. Use the scale of a minor six and minor seven. Now the third mode is the Phrygian scale, which is also a minor scale that is characterized by the second, uh, by the minor second degree. The scale creates a darker sounding minor mood and is suited for playing over minor seven and minor seven flat nine chords. They use a lot in metal and flamenco, although the dominant variant, uh, the dominant Phrygian scale, uh, is used even more for these styles. Now, the fourth mode is the Lydian scale, which is a major scale that is characterized by the augmented fourth degree. 
Now this mode is the brightest of all major modes. It's used a lot in film music and instrumental rock. And you can use this mode over major 7 sharp 11 chords. Now the fifth mode of the major skill is the Mixolydian mode, a major skill with a minor 7 degree. This, this makes it the darker sounding major skill, typically used over dominant chords. And it's used a lot in blues and old school rock like ACDC style songs for instance. Now the sixth mode is the Aeolian mode, a minor skill that is characterized by the combination of the major 2nd and minor 6th degree. The skill creates a definite sad sound and mood. Use this over minor 7 chord for instance. Now the 7th mode is the Locrian mode, which is a minor skill characterized by the minor 2nd and diminished 5th degree. This is an awkward sounding scale used for playing over half diminished chords. So, playing these skills and emphasize the characteristic notes, uh, which I like to call modal trigger notes, will set the modal sound uh, of this skill into your ears. If there are characteristic notes for each mode, then there are characteristic chords too, because one implies the other. Now as we look at the overview of triads in each mode, then we'll see a uniqueness, uniqueness appearing for chords too. In general, we can catch the characteristics of a scale in a functional harmonic 2-5-1 progression. But at the same time, modal music doesn't rely so much on functional harmony, and it's sometimes even best to avoid it. This means that Sometimes we have to adapt the 251 in order to grasp the real character of a mode. Now, this being said, let's define the characteristic chords for each mode. Now, the Ionian mode is the only mode that has a combination of a minor chord on the second degree and a major chord on the fifth degree. So, playing a 251 will definitely set the mood of this scale. Now, the Dorian mode is the only minor sounding mode with a combination of a minor chord on the 2nd degree and a major chord on the 4th degree. So, either playing a 2-5-1 or a traditional 4-5-1 or even a plagal 2-4-1 will result in a Dorian modal sound. The Phrygian mode is the only minor mode that has a major chord on the 2nd degree and a diminished chord on the 5th degree. So playing a 2-5-1 or even a 1-2-1 progression will create a Phrygian sound. Still, a 1-2-7-1 progression seems to highlight the mode in a more recognizable way. Now the Lydian mode is the only major mode with a major second degree. So playing a 2-5-1 will result in a Lydian sound. Using the 7 instead of the 5 will introduce an extra modal trigger note. Now the Mixolydian mode is the only major mode that has a minor chord on the 5th degree and a major chord on the 7th degree. So either playing a 2-5-1 or a 5-7-1 to trigger the Mixolydian sound. Now the Aeolian mode is the only minor mode that has, a minor, that has minor chords on both 4th and 5th degrees. So playing a 4-5-1 progression will result in the sad Aeolian sound. The Locrian mode is the only mode that has a diminished chord on the first degree. Also, the major chord on the fifth degree is unique for the Locrian mode. So playing a 2-5-1 will ensure you of a true Locrian sound. Of course, playing seven chords instead of triads will bring out the character of the mode even more, because the chance of playing one or uh, one of the characteristic notes for the mode is more likely to happen. Now that we know what notes and what chords make up the sound of a particular mode, we can now create exercises to train our ears and technical abilities to memorize chords, inversions, skills 
and arpeggios that outline the mode. We will make sure that all routines are alike uh, so we can compare them easier in our ears and memorize the chords, scale pattern and arpeggios better. Now the routine consists of three components. The triads and inversions of the progression that best outlines the mode. A scale run with three notes per string and triad arpeggios of the progression that best outlines the mode. Try to play with the routines as clean and as rhythmic as possible before gaining speed. This is essential for developing fine motor skills in order to speed up later on. Regarding ear training, you should listen to the sound and experience the mood of the mode. Very conscious use of your hearing is essential for efficient ear training. In the next chapter, we'll dive into the practice routines. But first, something about playing the exercise. When playing the chords and inversions of the cadences that outline the skill, try to find logical fingers by using common fingering and slide fingering. For instance, if you want to change from the C major to the D minor chord on the high strings, you can use two common fingers, finger one and finger three, to smoothly slide from one chord to the other. So keep that in mind when studying the first part of the practice routine. When playing the scale run, try to alternate between consistent alternate picking and legato playing. Keep your fingers as low as possible above the strings in order to limit the movement. This will result in faster playing. While playing arpeggios, also keep your fingers close to the strings and make small movements. There are different picking techniques from sweep picking to consistent alternate picking. Now, as we've seen earlier, the Ionian mode is best defined by a 1, 2, 5, 1 progression. C major, D minor, G major, C major. Here's the practice routine for the Ionian mode. The Dorian mode is best characterized by a 1-2-5 progression. You may want to change it to a 1-2-4 progression for a plagal cadence with a stronger modal Dorian sound. The Phrygian mode is best outlined by a 1 2 7 progression C minor, D flat major, B flat minor, and C minor. The Lydian mode can best be heard in a 2-7-1 progression, C major, D major, B minor, C major, where the 2 and the 7 degree bear the modal trigger note, the sharp 4th degree. The Mixolydian mode sounds best in a 5-7-1 progression, where the 5th degree and the 7th degree bear the modal trigger note, the minor 7th. C major, G major, B flat major and C major. Aeolian mode is best characterized by a 4-5-1 progression, C minor, F minor, G minor, C minor.
The Locrian mode is first of all characterized by the diminished first degree. Adding the second and fifth degree will trigger the Locrian sound. C diminished, D flat major, G flat major, and C diminished. Now what we did with the modes of the major scale, we can also do with any other scale. In this way we create a very basic but extremely efficient and universal tool for practicing any scale or mode. So let's look at some other scales to see if it really works as well as with the modes. Now the first scale on which we project our practice routine is the harmonic minor scale. This scale is a minor scale with a major 7 degree that creates one and a half step interval between the 6th and the 7th degree and it's best outlined with a 1, 4, 5, 1 progression, C minor, F minor, G major, C minor. The dominant Phrygian scale is a popular scale for flamenco and metal. It's a major scale with a minor 2nd, minor 6th and minor 7th degree. Now you could see this as a Phrygian scale with a major 3rd. And this scale can best be outlined by a 1-2-7 progression. C, D flat, B flat minor, C. A melodic minor scale is a minor scale with a major 6th and a major 7th degree. You could also see this as a major scale with a minor 3rd. The scale is versatile and is hard to catch in a few tries. Now taking into account we want to emphasize the minor 3rd, the major 6th and the major 7th, we could go for a straight 2-5-1 progression, D minor, G major, C minor. Projecting this practice routine on different scales, we can outline the scale musically and technically in a very basic yet efficient way. The 2-5-1 progression is most of the time the way to go, but adapting it to get a stronger feel for the scale is sometimes desirable. So I hope this will provide food for studying skills, and in the meantime you get a chance to develop your ears. Although training your ear for musical concepts is a world in itself, and it demands daily study of singing scales and intervals, write down melody lines, uh, recognize cadences, and develop rhythmic abilities to get a feel for music in general. Anyway, this could be one of the many tools uh, you can use to become a great musician, if you're not one already, of course. Greetings from the Netherlands, and I see you next time in a QGM Tracks video. Bye!